ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Taylor, and I am the advocate of the devil. You know what I haven't done in a long time? An episode about gaming. And in this day and age, just about everybody is a gamer. There are some who just play the latest in Madden and Call of Duty, others who stick with the tried and true classics like Super Mario and The Legend of Zelda. And then, if I may be permitted to generalize a bit, there's our parents and grandparents. Right around the time when Facebook started really popping, games like Mafia Wars and Farmville were getting national attention for their addictive nature. While we don't hear about them nearly as much now, that same style of gaming has migrated to something that we all have in our pockets. Maybe even being used to watch this right now. The App Game, Angry Birds, Candy Crush Saga, Temple Run, and that's just naming the ones that everybody knows about. Even if you don't play them yourself, you're aware of their existence and shake your head in disdain. These aren't real games at all. There's no substance, no stories, no difficulty. How can anybody call themselves a gamer if they play these, these, I don't even know what to call them. But here's the thing. I know exactly what to call them. Games. I've been gaming for nearly my entire life, and in those many, many years of wasting time with those digital playthings, few things have gotten as much hatred spewed at it than a little game called Angry Birds. Yes, other games have been shunned, put down, cast aside, but this one seemed to bring out the absolute worst in a lot of people. To the six of you out there who haven't heard, Angry Birds is essentially a game where you throw various round objects that loosely resemble feathered creatures and hurl them at a construct that has the heads of pigs and a slew of obstacles. Your goal is to hit all the pigs' heads in as few throws as possible, racking up points to get three stars on each level. High scores, that's the game today. No guns, no real conflict. Just a puzzle game with a scoring system. It's not a real game, they would say. The most polite would still be cruel in how they would knock down people who would dare try this one, even for a moment. Now I will admit, with much shame in my heart, that I was one of those people. But like a lot of things, it took me actually trying it to see what all the fuss was about. Do. Or do not. There is no try. And to realize just how foot-in-mouthy I would eventually be. Thankfully, as stated previously, I am a very old, but averagely young-looking man. And in my many years of game playing, there are many games that I have played. I don't stick to just one genre. I pretty much play anything and everything I can get my grubby little hands on. And in that long storied history of playing video games, there is one that I couldn't help but see how similar it was to this one. Scorched Earth, an extremely old DOS game. Side note, remember when you had to load up DOS to make games run better? Pepperidge Farm remembers. <clears throat> Where you pilot a tank, purchase different kinds of missiles and shields, and fight against your buddies, or the AI, in an effort to be the last tank standing. No story, very little content, and yet at the same time, loads of different combinations. And to me, Angry Birds was just a puzzle version of Scorched Earth. You're still taking aim with a projectile, smashing things to bits, and the different types of birds are the same as the different types of weaponry you can find in Scorched Earth. However, all you're doing is the same thing over and over again. Angry Birds, and games like it, are just exercises in repetition. And the definition of insanity is repeating the same action expecting a different outcome. There's no content. These can't be considered real games. You're hardly even doing anything. And even if you are, there's hardly any difference in it. Sound familiar? Well, if you're like me and you play retro games, then it definitely should. Think about early on in the history of video games. Games like Pac-Man or Breakout. All you're doing is the same level over and over again until you run out of lives. In the NES era, there's pinball or golf. Fun distractions without a lot of content. 
I can look at my own phone and see things like Pokemon Go, which, well, okay, at this point really doesn't need much of a description. Or Heroes Charge, that's better. Which is a pretty decent game done in an auto-attacking RPG style where you equip your characters along the way and collect items to power them up, which offers plenty more content when compared to some of the earliest games to be released. And speaking of content, or lack thereof, let's not pretend that the current games are guilt-free either. Games like Marvel vs. Capcom, or the current crop of WWE games cutting out the ability to play as certain characters until you buy them later as DLC. Don't get me wrong, I love the idea of buying extra stuff from when you're already done with a game. But there are certain things that a couple of console generations ago would have just been unlockables within the game itself. And now, you pretty much need to buy the game twice to play the entire thing. Now compare that to the dreaded casual-only app game. Sure, you have the option to spend real money to add content or progress faster, but it's an option. You give the kid options instead of orders, you know, let him make the right decision. In the games that I play, like Heroes Charge and WWE Supercard, you don't actually need to spend a dime. Every bit of content is available right off the bat, and you just need to play the game. And they're both free. The downside, however, is that there's a lot of grinding involved in both. Heroes Charge relies on a stamina meter to determine just how much of the game you can play at any given time. To progress through the core game, it uses a certain amount of stamina, and once it's depleted, you need to wait for it to recharge over time. I believe Jim Sterling dubbed this free to wait, much in the same vein as free to play or pay to win. WWE Supercard does something similar during their events, where you get a certain number of matches to play and then you need to wait to continue playing it. The thing with both of these games is that there are other modes within the same game that you can continue playing. So in theory, the game never really stops. This is the song that doesn't end. Oh, no. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. That's enough, guys. Now the problem with that is, it still requires a ton of grinding. You need to play the game constantly to stand a chance. And it's a vicious cycle of play, wait, continue doing modes that you might not particularly enjoy, just to earn new cards for your deck or new characters for your team so that you can actually do better in the modes that you want to play in. And this is something that is also prevalent in, and I quote, real video games. Not saying anything about you now, okay? They're talking about fictional characters. Fictional characters. RPGs will keep you locked in certain areas until you grind out a few levels or you dump points into blacksmithing to create the best weapons and armor faster just to get to the parts you like best, the combat and party dynamics. The true benefit to a good portion of these app games is the fact that most of them are available free of charge. Like in the case of DLC, you have the option to pay the developers more to access things sooner or progress faster, but it is an option. The ability to play these games just about anywhere, thanks to them being on something that, quite frankly, we all have at this point, and the amount of content that's in them, if you're willing to put in a little bit of work and have just a little patience, which since we now live in the era of day one patches and necessary installs, patience is something we've all had to learn. These games, in my opinion, are more than worthy of being called games. Despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary, I do hope I managed to shed some light into the positive aspects of gaming from your phone. Whether it be in the fact that a lot of these games provide a welcome evolution of games from the past, or even just the fact that there is plenty of content within them, especially compared to retro games, app games have every right and deserve to be called actual games. And while there are plenty that seem to take advantage of their customers, let us not forget that the bigger companies and more fully-fledged console and PC games have done the same thing in the form of DLC that seems to be cut out of their actual games, rather than provide more to us, the gamers. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for a new piece of my mind every Wednesday at noon. And let us know in the comments below what you think. 
Are there games out there you can't stop playing on your own phones? Maybe I'm painting app games in too positive a light. Or retro games too negatively. By all means, bring up all of your points against my own so that I may proceed to prove you wrong. Kaboom! You've been lawyered. But for now, in the case of app games, the defense rests. Chris? Chris? Yeah, dude, just give me one second, all right? I just gotta level up. You know, we're on a schedule. You know, you're kind of a hard ass. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Put the phone away. Absolutely.